Vapor barriers are routinely installed in basements to prevent condensation on the cold basement walls. But what if I told you that this is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make when it comes to the durability of your basement? Installing a vapor barrier in the wrong location in a basement can trap moisture and support mold growth, leading to the rapid deterioration of the interior framed walls, moldy, musty smells, and poor indoor air quality. There are two reasons why we may want to install a vapor barrier or a vapor retarder in a basement wall assembly. The first reason is to prevent warm, moisture-laden interior air from condensing on the cold concrete basement walls, as this can end up saturating any nearby framing and finishes and supporting mold growth. Moisture moves from warm to cold and from more to less. When they're moving in different directions, more to less always wins. However, moisture can't dry to the exterior in below grade walls, as the relative humidity of the soils is almost around 100%, which means that basements always dry to the interior. You can probably see where I'm going with this. The problem with installing a vapor barrier on the interior side of the studs is that moisture will always find a path into the cavity, whether it's through air leakage, capillary wicking from the concrete, or a small leak in the basement walls, or general construction moisture, and a vapor barrier will prevent this moisture from drying out to the interior. This has led to many moldy basements, poor indoor air quality, and even some structural failures from wet rot and dry rot. The second reason why we may want to install a vapor barrier on a basement wall is to prevent moisture from the exterior from being driven inside to the interior, and to provide a capillary break between the porous concrete and the adjacent wooden framing, as moisture will be wicked into nearby materials through capillary forces. The problem here is that the vapor barrier in this location does not prevent condensation from occurring on the basement walls, and it could still result in moisture accumulation, especially if the walls are not airtight. Additionally, a vapor barrier will prevent construction moisture from drying out, which can actually keep the basement walls in a saturated state and trap moisture behind the vapor barrier. There are thousands of pounds of water in these concrete basement walls. This water can eventually find a path inside if there's any holes in that vapor barrier. So what exactly does this mean? Should we even be installing vapor barriers in basements? Are we doomed either way by the physics? Well, the answer is actually simpler than you might think. We need a vapor retarder to be installed against the concrete foundation walls, and we also need to install an airtight vapor retarder behind the interior finishes to prevent condensation. However, the vapor retarder must allow the walls to dry if moisture accumulates in the wall cavity. Airtight is the key here, though, as air leakage into the wall cavity is the primary driver of moisture-related issues, not diffusion. The best strategy to address this is to install a couple of inches of taped rigid foam insulation against the concrete foundation walls. Rigid foam is a class 2 vapor retarder that can serve as an air control layer when it's taped or sealed and will prevent condensation on the foundation walls. It also serves as a nice thermal break which will keep the temperatures in your basement stable and consistent. Condensation doesn't occur on the rigid insulation if you're installing it at the right ratios and controlling interior relative humidity. You can use any rigid foam product of your choosing, whether it's EPS, XPS, GPS, or polyisocyanurate. Just make sure that they don't have any organic facers, since organic facers are pretty much mold food if they get wet. All the seams, joints, and transitions must be taped or sealed to prevent air from leaking through at those locations. And then you're free to insulate the framed walls with any unfaced vapor permeable insulation of your choosing. I happen to prefer mineral wool bats since they can also serve as a fire blocking material, and mold generally doesn't grow on mineral wool since it's inorganic. No additional vapor barrier should be installed here. The walls can actually dry to the interior from the interior surface of the rigid insulation if they get wet. You can also simplify this process by installing closed cell spray foam against the foundation walls, as closed cell spray foam serves as a class 2 vapor retarder and air barrier and has a high R value per inch, not to mention it can also be installed as a monolithic layer. It must be medium to high density closed cell spray foam, as open cell foam is way too permeable. However, keep in mind that spray foam can off-gas some nasty chemicals for an extended period of time, sometimes many months after the initial installation. We'll discuss the risks of spray foam in future videos at length. So what if you don't want to use foam products? This is where smart vapor retarder membranes have become a staple in basement wall assemblies, especially when you're using fibrous insulation types in isolation. Smart vapor retarders will prevent vapor diffusion from occurring from the inside outwards, but will allow for moisture to dry to the interior from the wall when relative humidity in the cavity exceeds 60%. This is really useful if there's moisture drying out of the foundation walls, as it won't get trapped behind the membrane like a standard sheet of polyethylene. It's also important that this membrane is taped with air sealing tape to provide a good interior air seal to prevent any warm, moisture-laden interior air from leaking into the wall cavity and condensing on a cold surface, as air leakage deposits significantly more moisture into a system than diffusion. You'll also need to air seal around the joist penetrations, so this strategy can be a little bit more labor-intensive, but if you want to avoid foam, this is the way to go. 
For more information on basement detailing, head over to asiri-designs.com where we have plenty of free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics, including insulating and retrofitting basements, preventing leaks, controlling humidity, and so much more. And sign up for updates on my design guide for dry and comfortable basements, which will be released very soon. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.